Cole with Regal Metal Works. Hey, in here on a Saturday, going to try and do some machining for the 2x72 belt grinder, the pivot point for the tracking uh, pulley. So uh, we're going to document that, and uh, we'll get on showing you what we got going on there. All right. All righty, guys. So before we go ahead and machine this, I want to at least show you what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, here's the block that I'm machining. This is the actual piece here. So as you can see, it's not a simple just contour. You either have areas you need to 3D machine or um, just not a good way to, to machine it in two ops. So for what I came up with is putting it this way. So this side up, we got our Z up, X to the left, and then straight forward for your Y. So I figured I can 2D machine these contours easy enough. Okay, and then, then uh, all I have to do is uh, flip it here, machine this here, machine finish machining um, uh, this pocket here, and then we flip it over here, and then I have to machine this back part. So this is the only part that I really need to 3D machine, so it, it limits the least amount uh, of 3D machining, just because 3D machining, even though it's really cool, it, it, it takes a lot longer. A 2D contour is much quicker. So I figured if I was going to mass produce these things, um, that if I was going to machine it, I, I wanted to be able to machine it as quick as possible, not spend like two hours machining one piece. So I'm not sure how long it might take. It might take an hour to machine it the way it is anyways. So, but here's what we got. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a uh, center bore drill here so that we uh, can do our uh, deep drilling. And then uh, after the deep drilling, I'm going to go back and I'm going to actually face this piece here off. And then we're going to go ahead and do a 2D adaptive clear using the three quarter inch shear hog. Uh, taking about about a quarter inch, 0.2 of an inch uh, depth of cut and width of cut. So this thing really hogs through the metal. You'll you'll actually get to see that. And then we'll follow up with that long uh, end mill, a half inch end mill, to do the contour, uh, a cleanup pass. So then uh, then we have all that we have left is this chamfer here, and we're going to do a 20 thou chamfer around this whole piece here, so we don't have any sharp edges. And then that will complete the the first operation basically. And then we have to flip it this way. But we're going to probably have to make soft jaws to hold this uh, because this material will all be removed down here and we'll only have one good solid face here. And it might be, eh, we might not have to do soft jaws on that to clamp that. We might be able to get away. Yeah, we might be able to get away because we'll be able to, to machine this back part here. I don't know. We'll see when we get there. Um, we could do a, a sim here if you guys wanted to see a sim. This is pretty cool. This really helps uh, not uh, breaking end mills and things like that. Um, where this is going to be our um, start here. This is going to be our uh, start. Oh, let's try it there. We're doing a drill, pre drill, and it comes off faces. And then this is the shear hog that's just going to remove the material the whole ways down. As you can see, it steps through. That's going to be the longest amount of time that the, the machine will be machining. And uh, then we're going to go back in with the contour, the 2D contour with the half inch right here. And then we're going to do a chamfer. And that's that. Statistics show it taking 19 minutes and 20 seconds to machine. And that's fairly accurate. It, it'll be close to that. It might be a little longer, a little shorter, depending on how long it takes me to change the tools or if I get a phone call or something in the middle of it. But um, so that you could probably say if you're really humping you could probably do three of these an hour and we could actually save some time we could set another mill or another vice up on the mill and uh, do another work offset so do a G54 G55 or whatever offset so you could have the, the tool same tool go and machine the other offset so but that's what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and machine this now and if anybody has any uh, ideas on like the best way to machine this um, the whole not to hold it but the start it this way and machine it or start it this this way and machine it or start it this way and machine it uh, I'm open to suggestions um, you know I'm not some great machinist or anything like that I just dabble around with it to to get the job done so alrighty guys so we got our stock already in here in the center we're doing dead center here um, already I machined the, the both sides down because we needed to pick up even points and mainly because we're going to flip it over then and I want it to have the same point. So if this was originally it was cutting the bandsaw, if it was off a little bit between the top and bottom, 
that would really affect centering this to, to uh, pick up the same points the machine because the part's actually bigger than the end mill so I can't uh, hit it all from one uh, top angle. I have to actually flip it over and finish machining the bottom and I want that to, to um, be as accurate as possible. So that's why I went ahead and faced off the sides here. More ideally, I probably would have uh, turned it this way and machined it, which in the future I may, might do, but actually it still won't be <laughs> any good. I uh, still need to pick up from there. But So I got all my tools all set up. We're using five different tools. We got chamfer mill, a drill spot. We got my quarter inch drill bit here. Okay. Oh no, it's still over here. Good thing I, uh, <laughs> I'll have to double check my height on this. Good thing I remember that. So we'll place that out. So I like to drill uh, my holes before I face off. That way any burr that's kicked up, I don't have to go back and chamfer it. So I'll just do a spot drill, a quarter inch drill, a face, and I'm gonna use the three quarter inch shear hog to remove the majority of the material. And then I'm gonna use my two inch, uh, half inch end mill here, three flute, to make the contour, clean up the, uh, all the shapes.
All right, guys, we got the part here finished. Um, everything worked well. I had a little issue with my chamfer offset um, kicking a burr up, so I just took a, instead of doing 20 thou, I did 25 thou and raised the chamfer bit up a little bit so I didn't kick that burr up, which did a nice job. But the other issue I ran into is you can maybe see it, you can see there's lines here. Now that's typical of using the three quarter shear hog because it goes down a quarter inch, it leaves lines. And usually you do a contour pass with that half inch mill that I used, end mill, and that cleans that up. I've never had it still leave lines. I even took off an additional four thou to see if I can clear it and they're still there. Now, it could be the geometry on this end mill. Let's see if we can, if we can get the focus. Let me step out. Oh, I hear you, Poppy, over there. See how it has those chip breaker for roughing? But it says it leaves a smooth finish. So I'm wondering if that possibly is what was leaving some of the, the tool mark. And I can't, it doesn't seem that the lines necessarily line up to those cut marks on here. So I'm not 100% sure, but I'm not crazy about that because I just think it just doesn't leave a nicest finish in your hand. Now I could probably throw this in a tumbler and, and clean that up that way and smooth it out, which I may do, but when you machine a part, I like the machine look. So I may, um, I may just 3D machine it. It'll take a lot longer than the 16 minutes it took to machine this, but basically it'll be sitting like this and your end mill, you use a ball end mill that will just go back and forth like this or up and down, but it'll leave a distinct pattern, a 3D machine pattern, and it actually looks pretty cool. I've done it a lot in the past if I can't get a perfectly smooth finish on this, but this is just a beta run. This is just a test uh, to try and get this, this thing up and running. Now I gotta go on a machine <clears throat> the bottom half off, and then I also, which actually leaves that round part down here, and then I have to machine the pocket out of here and then bore two holes there so that it can mount. Uh, I still got to work on my cam for that. And uh, when I get to that, I'll, I'll, I'll document that as well. Alrighty guys, I got uh, caught up with some customers. I had about five different customers coming in so I couldn't finish any of that machine work. I still need to make a set of soft jaws to hold this guy so that I could uh, machine the backside. So this guy, I need to make soft jaws that hold that so that I can hold it there, machine off the bottom, and then do the, the uh, 3D machine of the, the part on the bottom there. Um, I'll document that. I mean, maybe I'll come in tomorrow, Sunday. Um, we got another little project here. I came in today, a, a trailer with a broken frame. I you can see I got it up on the jack right there. This is completely broke. The other side's almost broke through. This part was broke, so I said, you know, I'd weld it up for him, not a problem. Uh, it's kind of a little warm today. It's pretty nice. But that's about all I got. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. And like I said, if anybody has any feedback on the machining, I uh, would love to hear it. Uh, the other thing, I, I don't know if I'm getting some tool deflection maybe that's putting those lines in there. This, you know, the, the tool's kicking out and it's not hitting. The original lines in there, not sure, but um, I'll have to go back to the drawing board on that one. But the part's completely usable, so um, that's what prototyping's for. Alrighty, guys, we'll talk at you later. So bring your A game, cause you know this party won't stop. We could never run out of time, sipping strawberry lime, you know I wanna share it with you.